Hello, how's it going? Welcome to another battle episode. I'm afraid I'm feeling a little bit flat today. Get it? The majority of this video needs to be filmed at my computer, so today I am 2D Bakari. This is just the modded version of Buff Up's Free Fox Live 2D model, so links to that are in the description if you'd like to check that out yourself. Whether you're new to the fandom or you just want to add another character to your massive collection of characters, I'm going to go through with you the full step by step process of what you need to do to bring your persona out of your head and into the real world. Step one is probably the most fun part and it's just deciding what you want to be. And that is a whole video in itself and I did do one of those so please go check that out. It should be up in the card right there if you haven't already chosen what your furry of the self is going to be anyway. <laughs> if you already know then you're ready to go. For example's sake for this video, uh, let's say I want to be a husky and I want my markings to be inspired by Gururumon. Step two. Uh, we need an artwork program to begin work on our design. So this will be easiest on a computer, but if you have like an art app or on your tablet or your phone that can also open files, then that will work too. For PC, I recommend downloading paint.net. Uh, it lets you do a lot more than the basic paint programs that are already there, uh, but it also isn't too complicated and it's free. So I have download links for that in the description as well. Otherwise, if you're already prominent in some kind of art program like Sai or Photoshop or whatevs, then go ahead and use that. Step 3. Reference sheet lines. Personas will need some kind of reference sheet to clearly portray how they look and you'll need to provide one to artists when you're getting artwork made. This can be just one image or multiple different angles depending on what you need it for, but most references will be perfect with just a front and back view. Uh, but if you want to commission a fursuit then you're definitely going to need one with a front, a back and a side view. You can draw this yourself or you can find some free to use lines and I'm going to cover both. So. Step 3A, drawing reference sheet lines yourself. Okay, so here we are in Paint or Net. Um, I recommend having a canvas of at least 1920 by 1080. And then you want to make a new layer. Don't draw on your background layer. <laughs> it's a very, very big mistake that a lot of us regret making. And uh, begin the sketch work on your reference sheet. I like to plan out the body with just some basic shapes, like, excuse my terrible mouse drawing at the moment. I can't fit the microphone and uh, the tablet on my computer desk. But like, have some leggies, and there'll be like one pose there, do some more knees. Yeah, just really basic shapes that give you an idea of what goes where. Let me find you some like actual sketch work I've done before. Like here, like this one. Here's one I'm working on at the moment. So if I just uh, start getting rid of layers, you can sort of see we go underneath there so I've, I've sketched out where I'm gonna put everything and then I do another sketch on top just to refine things out and then begin my final line work and don't forget to do a new layer for each stage <laughs> now Gerst's actually made a really great video that goes into all the tricks and tips and other essentials about doing a really nice reference sheet super duper in-depth to pretty much everything you need to know about making a really really nice reference sheet yourself but that's only if you really want to get that fancy that's there that's a good resource so There'll be a link to that in the description. Now, if you're new to digital artwork, uh, what you can actually do is do it all on paper first and then take a picture of it or scan it, open it up in your art program here and then trace over it. So let's get rid of this for a sec. Get rid of that horrible monstrosity. So here is a sketch that I did just very quickly on the paper then. <laughs> look at him, look at that little guy. So then what I can do is you can open up your layer, lower the opacity, make a new layer, and then you can just draw on top. Look at that. Nice and easy. The line tools in Paint.net are actually really easy to use. So even if you don't have a tablet, you can just do it like this. Look at that. It's so easy to manipulate. <laughs> like I used to do art like this all the time before I got my drawing tablet. Like, it does take a lot longer, but it's better than trying to draw with a mouse. <laughs> you can also do like the whole lines and the color and everything on paper if you want as well but you really do need your reference sheet to be as clear as possible so your artist won't get anything on your character wrong. A quick PSA as well, please only trace artwork that is your own. <laughs> I have to say it every time. You can look at other reference sheets to get like an idea on how to do it with the poses, but please don't upload any artwork where you've traced from someone else without permission. It's easy to tell and you will make the original artist very upset. So while you are just finishing off lining your reference sheet, we will go to step 3B, finding free reference sheet lines. Not all of us are artists or have time to make a reference sheet from scratch, but luckily a lot of very generous artists have actually made line art that is free for anyone to use. Lines like this are called a base. 
Sometimes you do need to buy them, but there are plenty of free ones out there. Good places to search are like DeviantArt, Weasel, Fur Affinity, or even just Google. But I like to start at Fur Affinity, so let's go there. All right. So if you remember from before, I wanted to be a husky, so let's search like a free husky reference. What comes up? Oh yeah, I mean, they're not bad. That was that was pretty cute. That's still not quite what I'm looking for, and not all of them are free lines. So let's change our search terms to free. Husky face. Yeah, now we're getting a little bit closer. So you can see in the titles there they say free canine, free, 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 free to use. Those are the sort of the things you want to keep an eye out for. Ah, here we go. So I like this one. By Crapit. So we do need to check that it is indeed free to use. Always double check because sometimes people re-upload or they've traced or Something like that. So always look for the description and give it a good read. So what have we got? Don't remove my logo. Cool. You don't have to ask to use it. If you wish, you can show me what you did with it. Do not trace or copy. You can alter the line art to have other expressions, tails, hair, ears, wings, etc. Cool. That's really handy, actually. And you may not sell this line art slash take commissions to do it. All right. This is only going to be for personal use, so that's pretty fine. But if we were to sell this character down the road, we cannot include this reference sheet. I'll also link this in the description below if you want to play with this one yourself and to give credit to the lovely craphead here. This is some very nice work. Now most line art will come in like a PSI or a PSD, but for us we just want a transparent PNG file. So to check that, go full view and there we go. If you see that the white background has disappeared, it is indeed transparent and that's what you want. The reason for that is because we're going to be coloring underneath it. So that way it looks a lot neater and is a lot easier too. Okay, so save that one on your computer and then open it up in your paint program. So now whether you were drawing it yourself or you were downloading free lines, both of you should be at the same stage now where you have your lines. So we are ready to move on to step four, coloring. So you're going to want to make a new layer underneath your lines. Now we could try and like really particularly try and like color inside the lines, but that takes too long. I don't have time for that. So I have a cheat for you. <laughs> this guy right here. He's a little magic wand and he is your best friend as a digital artist. So what the magic wand does, it essentially selects everywhere that is the same as what you click. So because we're selecting transparency, it, that didn't, we're on the wrong layer. Because you're selecting transparency, it selects all the transparent bits, but it stops at the black lines. Now if we zoom right in, see you've got these little semi-transparent little squares, you really want your selection to be on the inside of that. So for that, you need to up the tolerance. There we go. Think of the magic wand as like spilling a bucket of water, but it's going to stop everywhere there's something solid. However, you can up the tolerance and make your water more powerful to the point where it just goes through everything. You want to watch out for gaps in between like the arms and the heads as well, because sometimes those will be connected and then obviously the selection won't go in there. So do have a hunt around, make sure you've selected everywhere that isn't somewhere you're going to be coloring. And then what we're going to do is invert our selection. So the button for this is different from program to program, but usually control I will do the trick. It could also be shift control I. And then we go back to our layer under here. No matter what we do, we can't color outside the lines. Would you look at that? Nice and easy. So then what I like to do from there is I'll just like make a little base layer. So color in everything from there. I don't worry about that too much. And then I'll duplicate that. So now I've got a backup of the areas that I'll be coloring because we're probably going to deselect this later. So this makes it easier to reselect in the future. Now if you're finding that when you select the transparent areas, oh no, oh look, this one's gone on the inside. We don't want that. Uh, what this means is there is a line somewhere that isn't closed. Remember the water thing? There was a gap and the water got in. And unfortunately, this is a pain in the butt. You have to go hunt the bugger down. Usually it's like in between fur. So you gotta have a look around. Where are you, little gap? Ah, there we go. See here? There is a gap in the tail here. So what we want to do is Control D to deselect. Grab your brush and just fix up that little guy there. Doesn't have to be pretty. <laughs> and now, there we go. That's better. All right, so from here, you can do pretty much anything you like to begin coloring. You can use the brush, you can use the lines, you can use the shapes. You do not even need a drawing tablet. And to prove that, I am going to color in this entire reference sheet with just my mouse and the tools that paint.net provides. 
So uh, time lapse time. I was just making this up as I went along and I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping this character. I didn't want to do a lot of tiny stripes because those are just way too annoying to draw so it's nice big thick stripes to fit the style of the reference sheet. Also added the crest of friendship on the back there as well. So what I'm also going to be doing is because this is a precise marking I'm going to add a little thing on the reference sheet that points that out. Please ignore my layer gore, I know it's terrible. <laughs> Let's add another one to the monstrosity. <laughs> there we go. So if I put this here, and then we can add a little thing in text. And crest of friendship on back. So if your character has anything else that needs to be like perfect, then you're gonna want to add notes like this on your reference sheet. I will call him Shredder. Yeah. <laughs> Then the last thing you're going to want to colour is a colour palette, which is what these paw prints are over here. So you make a splodge of each colour that appears on your reference sheet. You don't have to do this, but it's a really nice gesture to your artist because then they don't have to like meticulously like, zoom in on each part of your reference sheet to try colour pick all your colours. It helps them get your colours exact. Actually, there's not enough paw prints here for the amount of colours I have anyway, so I'm just going to do what most people do and is literally just splodge the colours. Blood, 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 and beep. There we go, pretty sure that's all our colours. Yep, cool. That is our colour palette. So yeah, from here, don't forget to add a name. You could also add some personality traits if you want. So like, just add a text box over here and add any flavour text you want. Like, he really, really, really likes blueberries. Or he really loves his girlfriend. He's really playful. Just anything else that you want to add that you think will help flesh out your character. I'm going to save that one. Save it as a flat image. So we'll do that one as a PNG. Then you're ready for the next step. Step five, uploading. Because, you know, you want to show your persona to the world, don't you? So for that, we have to put it on the interwebs. You can upload it to pretty much anywhere you want, like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Furifurny, DeviantArt, Furimino. Uh, but if you use lines from another artist, you have to credit them in the upload. So just put a little thing in the description that is just like lines by and then link to it and that's perfect. <laughs> now on the interwebs he is out there congratulations you officially have your new persona yeah toy house is another good website for making character profiles but unfortunately it's still in a closed beta you need an invite code from someone to join this website so ask around your local furry community see if anyone's got any spare ones if this is what you want uh, otherwise furry amino's wiki entries thing is a really good alternative if you're not completely happy with how the artwork looks like what you can do is actually use this to commission an artist for what you actually want. Like, if I decided I wanted floppy ears and big, big wings on this character all of a sudden, but I can't draw them to save my life, what I can do is I can take this refugee to an artist, throw some money at them, and then be like, hey, on my commission, I really want to add some floppy ears like a Jack Russell Terrier and some big white angelic wings. Could you please add them on my commission? Even if you need it as a completely different species, you could take it to the artist and be like, hey, can you make this for me as a Dutch Angel Dragon? It's pretty simple. 
And that's it. You have made your official persona. And from here, you can use that to show people, to show them what you really look like on the inside, or more characters to add to your story or commission artwork. There is so much you can do now that you have this. So I hope you found this little guide helpful. Let me know in the comments if you're stuck on anything or have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!